Thank you, Dr. Uh, uh, Pramod. Uh, Honorable Dinesh Gunavardhana, Foreign Minister of Sri Lanka, uh, and Dr. Sashi E. Tharoor, Member of Parliament and former Minister of State for External Affairs, India, and Mr. Suresh, former Minister of India uh, and Indian Emissary to G20 and G7. Professor Dr. Uh, Tomoko, Special Advisor to Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, retired uh, from Japan. Excellencies and distinguished part participants of, of NICE Global Conclave. Uh, very good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Thank you, NICE Nepal, for, for organizing a pra praiseworthy work. Creating and sharing knowledge is very important. So thank you for this opportunity. And I thank NICE Nepal for inviting me in multiple times to participate in uh, your uh, global events. Uh, uh, in this opportunity, I really want to thank NICE Nepal and especially Dr. Pramod for keeping a very healthy relationship with me. I'm going to uh, continue my speech with a presentation. As you can see, climate change and green school so that's the topic I have chosen for my speech. The effect of climate change in Maldives is very visible and it's alarming. You can see the severity of soil erosion in the low lying islands of Maldives. So this is one of the biggest island uh, called Formula. Uh, you, uh, soil erosion is very severe. This is another island. They are also soil er erosion is severe. This is the uh, nature of many of our islands as effect of global change, effect of climate change. And this is Maldives economy is based on the uh, tourism. So safeguarding our coral reef and white sandy beaches are very important. But you can see the uh, situation of the coral reef because of the climate change. And from the right, you can see this picture. This is the, uh, uh, due to sea level rise and tidal waves. Just a few weeks before, many islands experienced uh, this difficult time because of the tidal wave and sea, sea uh, sea level rise. So these are a few examples of climate change in Maldives. And if you look at the effect of climate change in Nepal, uh, we can see those beautiful mountains uh, with ice cap. But, but now what's the situation? So ice is melting and then there is an uh, impact of global uh, climate change in Nepal drought is another example. So this is the situation in many countries, uh, either drought or flooding or, or forest on fire. Uh, these things are happening. Even the, uh, the largest reef in the world, Great Barrier Reef in Australia is also experiencing this. So cl uh, climate change is a global issue, not, it's not an a issue of any specific country. If, as we are talking about the climate change, uh, it's worth to look at the causes and effect of climate change. We all know this, but it is good to reconsider these effects. Uh, so the causes uh, like rapid industrialization and also energy use. Uh, by, by, by burning the fossil uh, fuel. And agricultural practice, like using the chemicals. Uh, deforestation is another main causes of the uh, climate change. Consumer practice, we are not considering how to use the, uh, these uh, resources. There should be a limitation and we have to consider the, our, our environment, uh, especially things like 3R, reduce, reuse, recycle. Those things we have to consider. And uh, livestock uh, transportation is another main contributor causing the uh, global warming and the climate change. And resource extraction, finally, pollution is a major uh, problem uh, globally. 
the effect or we all are experiencing the effect. Some examples I have just shown apart from this, rising the temperature and rising the sea level. So well, some scientists are saying that low lying islands, low lying countries like Maldives uh, may not be, may not be longer exist after a uh, uh, hundred years from now. And also uh, unpredictable weather patterns increase the uh, extreme uh, weather events and land degradation and loss of wildlife and many other things. So what are the uh, social impact of climate change? Yeah, displaced people, poverty, loss of livelihood, hunger, multi, uh, malnutrition, and many things. And countries like Maldives and other uh, uh, small islands may be climate uh, migrates. Therefore, we all, all the countries should take action against climate change. As this is a fact, so what now? So this is the question we all need to ask. The leaders, the citizens, uh, universities, we all should ask this question. As you have seen few examples of the causes of the climate change, impact of the climate change. Now question is, so what now? The answer is this. We have to think globally and act locally. So this is a very nice saying. Uh, this should be the motto for every country, every government, every citizen of this globe. We have to think globally, but act locally. So we, we, we should have global targets and national policies to be translated into policies and actions at the city level, at the island level, or at the family levels, even in the individual level. Yeah, as you can see, uh, we have to think globally, and then we can we should have policies, our country level, city level, district level, even individual level. Finally, that will together contribute uh, to minimize uh, the global warming and negative impact of climate change. Now, let me share uh, an initiative from government of Maldives, from Ministry of Education. We are trying to make our schools as environment friendly schools. So we have developed a framework uh, called Fehi Madarsa. Fehi Madarsa means green school. So let me share uh, this briefly, what we are going to do. In our Fehi Madarsa project, we have objectives and we have main focus. Our objectives are reduce environmental footprint and also school community members uh, demonstrate environmentally sustain, su su sustainability literacy and also promote climate prosperity. And as the pillars of this initiative, we have taken waste, ocean, island and innovation. In all these areas, students will be educated and they will have uh, the right behavior and practicing these things in the school, in the community, with their parents and other community members. So uh, in the uh, Fehi Madarsa or the green school, uh, these are the things we are going to do like uh, governance and the culture of school, educational programs, school campus, school community involvement. So everywhere there will be sustainable practices and environmental friendly practices. So this is a holistic approach where everyone will be participating. Yeah, you can see that uh, the lesson plans, all subjects and all grade levels to include of lessons where topic is connected to sustainability and environmental stewardship. So that is educational programs. Then there is whole school activities, various events, activities, policies organized at school, encourage positive change towards sustainability. So that is school campus. And also governance and the culture of the school and also school community involved. We believe that uh, the 
we can include the parents, the community members, the students, everyone uh, with the sustainable behavior and the sustainable practices. So uh, if a school wants to be a green school, these are the uh, steps I'm not going to into detail. So this is the structure of the program, how a school can be a, a green school. And before we start, we will do a baseline survey. Uh, after keep, we will keep the data, then after one year of intervention, then we will see what, what have been changed from the practice, from the behavior and the knowledge as well. So FEHI team comes up uh, with an informed action plan. This is for each school. Each school, they will have their own uh, green school action plans. So how they will, uh, how they are going to manage the waste, uh, safe waste management, and also reduce eco uh, footprint. And then the knowledge about the ocean and teach students how to swim, how to safeguard the coral reef, and also ocean literature and the island uh, and also innovative practices. Then, as I said before, students will be uh, educated in eco-literacy, climate prosperity. Uh, and there will be programs organized for the parents and community members. So this is uh, what I have shown you uh, before. So th th this is the framework for green schools. So when the schools uh, are ready with their action plans, they will implement the action plans throughout the year and document thoroughly. So once they are ready to inspect, uh, they believe that their schools are now ready for inspection. A team from National Institute of Education will visit the school and see in all these main areas how the school is doing. If the school is doing well, then the school will be awarded Yeah, the school will be awarded either bronze award or silver award or gold award and super fair award. Then uh, they can get a plaque. This can be uh, displayed outside of school. So parents, teachers, students, everybody can see this. Uh, but this award and this plaque would be given for two years only. Then after two years, again, uh, the school will be inspected and see whether the school fall the same category or lower category or higher category. The purpose is uh, to keep the practice as a sustainable manner. So this is like uh, Fehi Mother's uh, uh, recognition. As I said, different categories of awards will be given to the schools. We believe that students will try to get award for their school. Teachers will try to get award for their school. Then uh, there will be a change in the attitude behavior. Even now, uh, the syllabus and the textbooks have knowledge about the climate change, uh, global warming, but it's only in theory. It's not in the practice. It's not in the behavior. So our purpose is uh, to change the behavior and inculcate the uh, eco-friendly practices among the parents, among the students as well. So when, when a school get an award, we will give a uh, award with some tools which they can be used to become uh, more greener, like solar, solar panels and segregation bins and lead bulb lights, water fountain, or, or anything which can be used to be more greener, more environment friendly school. And another thing uh, we are doing is even the whole world, uh, all the education ministers, 75 education ministers in the world recently agreed, agreed ba Berlin Declaration in which uh, next 10 years education systems in the world will be trying uh, to achieve education for sustainable development goals. Uh, 
at the at the uh, inaugural speech honorable dinesh uh, gunavardhana also mentioned the importance of sustainable development and what sri lanka is uh, doing so same thing every other country also should uh, do to achieve sustainable development goals as un un has declared seven uh, sustainable development goals when you when we look at these goals we can see climate actions life below water and life on land for all these things are very much related to this topic uh, uh, climate change therefore i call upon uh, all the members uh, who are participating in this conclave Uh, to think globally and act locally to implement education for sustainable development goals and be a, be a promoter uh, be an advocate to promote uh, and take action to mitigate uh, the negative impact of climate change we all should work to uh, secure our world and make the world a safer place for our future generation this world not only belong to us this world belong to the future generation so therefore we have to take this world is a safer place to our children and our grandchildren so that's all i want to share with you uh, before conclusion once again let me thank uh, uh, the nice nepal and dr promod and other organizers for organizing this wonderful conclave uh, you have organized even previously you have organized very wonderful platforms like this so thank you for your uh, great work i appreciate it and once again thank you for inviting me i wish everyone a very good day thank you